Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Nicole and this video is about how to take good in sax photos. If you're new here and like these type of videos, please like and subscribe for the YouTube algorithm and I would really appreciate it if you do. So after you guys hit that like button and subscribe button, I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience with Instax photography. So I have been shooting Instax film for around 10 years now. So I guess you could say that makes me an expert if that is a thing amongst instant film photographers. So over the course of these 10 beautiful years, I have shot I think approximately over 400 instant photos. And if you don't believe me, here is my box. I haven't counted it in a while, but the last time I counted it, I think it was around 400-ish. So I have this box. And I also have this little photo, mini photo binder. So my box is really disorganized right now because I just haven't gotten around to organizing them yet. Even though I said I was going to do it last year during lockdown, but that didn't happen because Netflix. So since I have shot so many Instax film, like I've spent easily a small fortune over the years, I guess you could say. And yeah, my significant, or he jokes that these are like my Pokemon cards. Except if these were the first gen Pokemon cards, I would put them in a nice binder because you know how much some of those first edition cards are worth now if you look it up on eBay. So I will be showing you my tips and tricks for taking good Instax photos and I'll also be showing you some examples of what not to do in Instax film photography so you can save your coin and save your shots because as anybody knows this film isn't cheap, it can easily add up and each shot is money down the drain so you want your shots to count. So I have been using two Instax cameras to take my photos. First one is the Mini 90. The second one is the SQ6. Now prior to only these two cameras, I had the Instax Mini 50S, which is the predecessor to the Mini 90. And I personally have not owned the Instax 7, 8 Mini 7, 8, 9, and 11. And that's because I like the features that I had on the 50S and the Mini 90. So each Instax camera does have a different set of features, so you should definitely look up what features you desire in your Instax film cameras. I personally like having self-timer because I like to take self-timer photos of me and my friends or sometimes just of me if I'm traveling alone. So for me, self-timer is important and I know that's not available on all the models. And I know some people like having the mirror on the camera to take a good selfie and to get the right angle. So definitely make sure that the Instax film camera that you're planning to buy or own or whatnot has the features that you are looking for. So 10 years ago when I bought my Mini 50S, I had to buy it on, I think, Amazon because they didn't carry Instax film cameras everywhere. Like now they carry them at Target and Walmart and back then, like 10 years ago, that was not the case. I think the only place you could buy it was like maybe photography stores and Urban Outfitters, they had the Mini 7S. So needless to say, I'm really glad that Instax film photography has blown up over the years because even to buy like the cute design films that have like Hello Kitty, Disney, Rila Kuma, back then like 10 years ago, you had to go to Asia to buy it. You couldn't even buy it online, but now you can just buy it on like Amazon or another store and they'll like ship it to you. So my first tip, and probably one of the most important tips I think for taking good insect photos is you want a cloudy sky if you're shooting outside. You want a cloudy sky because it does soften the light and I'm not talking about an overcast sky where the, it's all covered in clouds so it's white. You want some pops of blue in your sky but you want some clouds because that helps soften the light. So for example in this photo I took of the seven magic mountains on the way to Las Vegas there are some clouds, so it softens the light and it also adds character writing to the photo since you have the rock sculptures and you have the clouds in the back. So it's not just a plain blue or a plain white sky. So it makes the photo a little bit more interesting. In the second photo, this is of Hobbiton in New Zealand. 
as you can see there's some clouds here because that day it was sunny but a little bit cloudy and so the lighting was soft there's no harsh shadows even though this is like late morning the lighting is nice and in this third photo this is a photo of uh, Whitehaven Beach with Sundays in Australia as you can see you want some sun because otherwise the water is not going to look as pretty and the white sand will not look white it's going to look gray but you have some clouds to soften the light because otherwise the white sand is going to be too bright and it's going to look really harsh and now you see in this last example so this is at Bawar Basin in the valley so if you ever go there, it's basically the ground is white. But the time I went, it was basically like in the peak afternoon, but it was kind of like overcast. So the problem is, is that since it's very white and then the sky was not in my favor and the lighting, it just sort of overexposed everything rather than having the nice soft lighting of like a sunny but a little bit fluffy cloud day. The second tip I have is avoiding harsh lighting slash harsh contrast. So unlike taking photos with a digital camera or your phone, what you see is definitely not the same as what will appear on your film. And what your camera on your phone or cam digital camera will capture will not be the same as film, especially Instax film. So for example, here's a photo of the painted ladies. So I took this with my insect camera and as you can see the shadows are really dark so here is a second photo in San Francisco but this is from I think Twin Peaks so as you can see because of the shadows from I think it was trees or the hill or whatever that made me look dark but since there was so much light in the background it looks really overexposed versus the front of me is a little bit darker yes you can still see me but the lighting is very harsh so it doesn't look as nice versus if it was just like a normal cloudy day. And in this last photo is of Disneyland. So even though you can clearly see the castle because of the shadow that and the way the sun is angled, the, the castle is casting a shadow. And it really shows in the insects film. Versus if you shot this in digital, you could probably post process it or adjust your settings to where there's maybe a little bit more light in the area that's underexposed in the insects photo but since it's an insects film you can't just adjust your settings to that level of change in your film photos yes you can adjust your settings a little bit but it's not going to save you in those areas so my third tip is to avoid taking photos in sunset sunrise dusk or close to those time periods now as you can see in this first photo this is of a sunset I don't remember where this was. It was probably California or Hawaii, to be honest. But as you can see, insect film does not capture sunrises or sunsets well. So save your film and don't waste it on a sunrise or sunset. In this second photo, this is of what was supposed to be Montmartre in Paris. So when I was there, it was not dusk yet. It was like blue hour, which I guess could be dusk, but it wasn't like quite there yet. It was like a little bit before. And I thought it was okay because in my eyes, there was enough light. But to the film, that was not the case. So that's why it looks dark. It obviously needed more light. And that's why it just looks like this blob. So I don't really recommend taking photos if you're like almost near dusk. Even if you're not there yet, just don't risk it. And in this third photo, this is of a waterfall in Oahu on one of the hikes. So this waterfall is in a jungle. So even though I'm obviously hiking in the daylight, this area is covered in trees. So there's a lot of shade and there's no real direct sunlight. So as a result, even when I take photos with my iPhone or my cam digital camera, it clearly shows up. But with film, that is not the case. It will not show up. Even with a regular film camera, it will struggle to appear and it only capture the water because I think that's like water shows up a little bit easier and it's white in the camera and stuff in the film but you can't capture the details of the rocks and the trees and the nature and stuff like that 
So I don't really recommend shooting if you're in like a very shaded area because it's going to be too dark even though in your eyes and your, your digital camera it's not. And my fourth tip is to try to center your subjects. In general, especially with the mini size film, it's good to just center your subjects because in the mini film, your image space isn't that big. So it's better just to center it unless you can do a nice rule of thirds, but overall just centering your folds looks a lot nicer. In the square format, you have a little bit more leeway in terms of centering your photos. But for example, here is a picture I took in Chicago of one of, I think, the Calder structures. As you can see, it's centered, it's bright and red, so it looks really nice. And here is a photo of me on, in Vancouver on one of the suspension bridges. Since it's on the mini size, it's better that I am in the middle because if I was in rule of thirds, it wouldn't look as nice and I think my arms would honestly get cut off. And in this other photo I have, this is of me and my significant other at Disneyland. Since the Ferris wheel and me and my significant other are in the center, it looks nice. Like you see everything, it's really straightforward. And if you look at the photo from far away, you can tell it's us at Disneyland, California Adventure. My fifth tip is to avoid having small subjects. Now I'm just going to show you a bunch of examples of photos that were taken of me with the different Instax films. So as you can see, in most of these photos, I am relatively close to the camera. So you can clearly see that it's me, even from far away, you can clearly see it's me. And it also helps if whatever you're wearing kind of stands out a little. And here's also a photo of me in front of this Totoro street art. Since Totoro is big and stands out, it looks really nice. You can clearly see what's in the photo. However, here is a picture of me that my mom took when we were in Australia. And I with some kangaroos. Since it's far away, my face is kind of blurry. I mean, it looks like me, but it kind of doesn't at the same time. And the kangaroos are also a little blurry. Granted, the kangaroos are animals, so they're going to move and stuff, so it won't be super clear. But just in general, if your subject is far away, they're going to come out a little bit like not focused because that's the nature of the Instax camera films. These aren't SLRs with big zoom lenses, so you can't really expect them to be super sharp. In fact, they're going to be a little bit more blurry, and that's part of, I guess, the look and the nostalgia factor of instant film. My sixth tip is be careful when taking out the photo or whoever is taking out the photo, be careful with it. As you can see in these two photos, they weren't careful taking it out so now it has this weird mark. I don't know how it comes from, I think it's from them taking it out because it looks like a fingerprint. So just be careful when taking out your film and also most importantly, do not shake your film. This isn't Polaroid, you don't need to shake it. And I find that it's also helpful to keep it away from the sun. For some reason, I think that makes the film turn out a little nicer, but that is just me. The next tip I have is mastering your settings and the distance you are from when you're taking your photos. So on each camera, there's different settings. So for mine, I like to use landscape setting a lot because I like to take a lot of landscape photos uh, with Instax film. So as you can see, I use the landscape setting, so that makes the images more sharp, rather and blurry. And here's also a photo of me that my parents took. I think they used the automatic mode, but as you can see that I'm at a good distance where I come out really sharp. But if they were like too close, then the camera won't focus as well. I think even for the macro mode on the insects cameras, you still have to be getting like 40 to 60 centimeters away from your subject. Otherwise, it's going to turn out too blurry. So always make sure you're at like the right amount of distance to what you want to focus and to adjust the modes on your camera accordingly. And my final tip for insects photo taking is if you are going to take photos indoors, either A, have good lighting, B, fire off the flash, and C, no matter what, make sure your subject is big and close up enough. So if it meets those requirements or some combination of those, then I would say it's okay to take an Instax photo. 
So if you can't fire your flash off, and even if the lighting is really good, sometimes the photo will not come out as nice. So here is a photo I took at the Broad. Being at the art museum it is obviously well lit. It has a lot of light. And normally those walls are supposed to be white. But since the insect film is not like your iPhone where it will take a nice photo of art. And since I can't fire off the flash, the photo doesn't look that nice. And if your subject's not big, like in this photo, this is me and my SO, we're at the Cosmopolitan. Since we are so far away and the lighting's not that great, even though the flash I think was fired off, but since we're so far away, the photo doesn't look that nice and you can't really tell it's us unless you know that it's us. And here is an example of when we're technically indoors, but since there's a lot of light. So this is at the Willis Tower in Chicago. Since there is good lighting all over, since the sun is going through the glass ledge and stuff, there's enough light so that the flash doesn't need to go off and we look clear and you can see that it does. And lastly, here is a photo at Disneyland where my SO and I are meeting Darth Vader. Since the flash went off, it was, yeah, we appear, but since we're far away, and our Vader is far away, and he blends in the background. This doesn't look as nice as it could be. So it's really important that your subjects stand out and that there's good lighting and or you have the flash that goes off. You're not too far away. So you need sort of all those sort of conditions to be met in order for your photo to come out nice in some way, shape or form. So that's why I tend to not shoot indoors as much unless like I'm just gonna keep firing off the flash ends of people close by. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and comment about your experience with insect film photography. I'm always interested in hearing about it. And I personally have gotten quite a few of my friends into getting instant cameras and stuff. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.